Hello, everybody, and welcome back to The Advisor with Stacey Chalemi. Today, I'm here with Roger Connect, and he is the founder of Universal Academy Center, and he has some amazing information that he's going to go over today about customer score. And if you're not familiar with that term, he's going to explain what it is and why it is so important. If you run a small, medium, or a large business, this is something that you really want to take interest in, and he's going to show you some th tricks and strategies and different ways that you could help yourself and help your business grow and become the expect, I guess, reach the, the, the level of success that you have always anticipated on. So Roger, it is a pleasure to have you here. You know, I want to make sure everybody knows also that you are part of our podcast community. You have your own podcast on our show. They can find you anywhere on the internet and they can find all your episodes under your podcast. And I just encourage everybody to listen because you have such amazing advice and your um, expertise in this field is unbelievable. I really commend you on everything that you've been sharing with the public. And, you know, you really have some great input to show people how to build businesses the correct way and why they should actually incorporate accounting and other tactics to help build their business to the height and to the level of success that they really want to lead it to in, in the future and that it's possible because sometimes people get plateaued or they're not doing as well and they think they, they want to give up, you know, they, and, but there's always a great way and always tools and strategies to help them grow. And today you want to talk about, um, you want to talk about the uh, customer score. So, you know, what exactly is customer score for people who might not be familiar with that terminology? Well, Stacey, first of all, thank you for having me back again. I'm enjoying this series of business discussions that we're having. And as it relates to customer score, what we're basically saying here is how are we scoring with our clients? We basically have customers that are paying us for products or services that we're providing. And we need to step back and assess how are we doing? What is the feedback that we're receiving from them? And clearly this feedback can be leveraged from a marketing point of view. If we're getting great reviews, we can use that. So we're going to be discussing today how that can be advantageous in our selling process. But at the same time, it's the feedback that we're getting as to they're using our product and service as to, okay, what can we be doing differently or better to retain their loyalty and keep them as a, as a valued customer? So there's a lot that we're going to be kind of dialing into today as it relates to the customer feedback that we should be receiving. I love it. Now, you know, why are, you know, is, is customer service such a, a, an important asset? Because sometimes people are so busy and so entailed with the cust with the, with the product or the service that they really forget to, you know, focus on the customer feedback and they forget to focus on what the customer is trying to verbally get through. I know now with AI, it's sometimes very hard to even get through to customer service, you know, always getting a recording, you know, and can get very frustrating, you know, for, for people who, um, you know, have a business, you know, explain to them, you know, if they're, you know, before we begin on uh, different steps, I know that you have like a, a certain, certain aspects you want to go over, but, you know, why is it so important, especially when you look at small and medium sized businesses, you know, because you see a lot, a lot of large businesses go in the AI route. Why is it so important to have human contact? And, and why is it so important to maybe look on the internet and see the feedback that they're given maybe on online reviews and, and, you know, what they're telling them? Because a lot of times, you know, that's being overlooked. Now that everything's going in the AI direction and it's going in the digital direction, I think a lot of times, um, companies don't really understand what the customers, you know, are feeling and what they really need. Well, here's how I'm going to answer this. One, AI, it's obviously going to serve a business purpose. You're going to find that it can streamline things. It can be cost savings and the fact that it can, it can be more efficient and affordable. But what we need to recognize in all business and relations is the human interaction. We are people that like to interact with one another. And some people may say, no, 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 I'm fine. I don't like humans. I'm anxious around other individuals. That's more the exception than the rule. Naturally, what we look for is love, affection, acceptance, care. We are looking for that, that human physical interaction. And one of the things that's struggling in society today is how disconnected we are becoming. And so, yeah, I do want to emphasize that 
although we might find that there are ways to streamline things in order to be able to connect with your customers and meet them where they are, you need to be able to meet them physically in a, in a relationship kind of fashion. You need to give them attention. You need to listen. You need to be able to uh, address their needs and concerns and when possible, also physically be able to interact with them. And so it's not always possible, but that's something that we're going to be talking about today as it relates to them being our biggest advocate as it relates to our marketing. Now, you said earlier that social proofing is very important. Can you explain what social proofing is to people? Yeah. And why it's so important? Yeah. So this is something that's come up only in the last decade. If you kind of remember, for those of us who are older, we would oftentimes base our decisions on referrals. We would have a sister, a brother, a neighbor, a friend, and they would basically have similar tastes or interests as we would do. And so we would say, you know, who's the dentist you use, you use for your family? We would say, where do you prefer to go shopping for your groceries? Where are the best produce? We would say, where's the best restaurant? And it wasn't uncommon for them to simply make a recommendation and we'd say, okay, they've been there. I trust them. They have similar interests. So I'll just trust the process. Well, that changed about 10 years ago when you started to receive online, essentially what's called social proof. It's the ability for the masses to go in and actually characterize something. And as a business, this is very important to understand because before we used to think prior to that, uh, this change a decade ago is if we could just get individuals that were happy customers, they would refer their friends, family, and neighbors. But all of a sudden what's happening is the online presence that we have is either going to help or deter that from working. And my point is, is simply this, there's a number of stories where someone's gotten a referral, but before acting on that, that suggestion, they go online and whether it be uh, Yelp, Trustpilot, Google reviews, Facebook, they're looking at the reviews that other individuals have of that product or service and making a decision, not on the rec recommendation of the friend, family, or neighbor, they're making the recommendation on this mass of individuals whom they do not know, but yet there's a thousand people that said that out of a score of five, this is a 3.7 okay, I think there's a problem here. And what, what they all of a sudden start to realize is even though the friend recommended it, clearly these thousand people know more than that one friend. And I'm going to take more into consideration what the thousand people are saying than what my one friend has said. And so when you go on Amazon and you're looking at a product to purchase and you see the star reviews, somebody that's got a 3.5 compared to a 4.8 matters. Even if, even though somebody may say, well, that's my sister that owns that company. That's a product that I have in my very home. It doesn't matter. They got a 3.5 and that's going to be the decimation of that product or service. So under social proof, we just have to understand the psychology that exists today in business, that it is hugely important for us to get online reviews. Now, I'm going to take a moment here and go into two elements that make up this review. When we first of all recognize that there are various platforms out there that we can have reviews on, Google, we have to recognize is perhaps the most prominent. Google and Amazon, maybe Etsy, the platform that we're selling on. And Google particularly because of the searches that are happening. So you want to make, make sure you have your Google listing, that you've acquired that as a business and you're able to manage it. Now that you have that Google listing, you want to then leverage it and request reviews of those that are being favorable of your services. And this brings me to my two points. Whatever platform you're capturing these reviews on, you have to understand that they need to be quantifiably relevant, which is to say five reviews does not compare to 50, does not compare to 500, does not compare to 5,000. Quantity matters, but that quantity also is indicative of timeliness. Yeah, you got 500 reviews two years ago, but you've only gotten two reviews in the last two months. How relevant are those reviews that are now older? So you have to have this constant emphasis on getting referrals so that they trickle in naturally. And as a business, it has to be a priority that, yeah, I got some great reviews two months ago, but did I get one last week? And you have to put that as a priority. The second thing you have to understand is the weight of the reviews. Let's just assume, for example, that all the scales are zero to five or one to five. Realizing that, you have to understand that many individuals won't give a five-star rating. There are individuals that believe that perfection is unattainable. And so the, the best, they're going to give you a 4.9 or a 4. And so you have to understand that for you to get a 4 is totally fine as, it's, uh, as an individual rating. There are certain people out there that will always presume you can do better. But what you have to be concerned about as a business is whenever your ranking drops below 4.5 overall, 
Okay, now people are going to start diving into the comments to re read why this is the case. And they're going to hunt for perhaps those negative reviews that have pulled you down below the 4.5. 4.5 to 4.7 is very, very natural in the sense that that's a common range to be in. It may cause people to kind of pause for a moment, but it's not going to perhaps deter them. 4.8 and above you're doing amazing. Anything between 4.8, 4.9, and 5, you're going to be doing just fine. Obviously, that's where we want to stay. And in the event that you drop below 4.8, you get that 4.7, 4.6, the overall score, 4.5, you need to put, put forth a proactive effort to go solicit your, your happy customers for the reviews. You need them to come in and help elevate that average so that as a social proof, you've got the masses helping people make that last decision of, is this the right choice? I love that. And you know, one of the biggest problems that I've seen is that, so when I went to school, they always said, okay, referrals is the big, the best thing that you could have when it came to marketing. It was the most powerful and it, it was better than ads and this and that. And, you know, the professors always boasted about referrals is number one. Now we've come into a different era, but a lot of times, you know, I think we've talked about this also in previous episodes, people get stuck in the old ways and they don't, you know, they don't move along with time. And so it's really, I think it's necessary to really emphasize to these individuals that have businesses that time has changed and it's not always, you know, the referrals that people are going to rely on. Like you said, they're going to look at the reviews and it's not just the quantity of the reviews. They're going to look at the overall scores. And if you like, like you just mentioned, if they, you drop, you know, under a certain point, they're going to start reading, you know, your negative reviews and why you dropped. So it's really important, you know, to really focus on your, your online reviews, like you mentioned, you know, and people who are kind of stuck in the olden days, they have to really get this through their head that time has changed and that it's no longer just referrals that are going to get you, you know, your clients, because I still have clients that say, you know, they think that referrals is the best thing, but, you know, when you go online, you have all these different things like Google, you have, you have Yelp, you have this, you have that. There's so many, you know, overall business sites that you can go on to check out a business, to check out a doctor, to check out everything. And so people really have to keep up with that and make sure those scores are, are you know, like you said, if you could do between a point, I think you said 4.5, 4.8, that's really good, correct? Yeah, 4.8 and above is where you want to be. 4.5 okay. to 4.7 is where you may be wanting to put forth oh. a little bit of effort to get a higher score. 4.5 and below, they're reading your negative comments. They're trying to figure out what's going on here and what should I be aware of. And so you've just got to be con conscious of that. But to summarize what you just said, yeah, referrals are king. You want to get referrals. It's wonderful to have advocates out there that are promoting you, that basically celebrate you and push people your way. Definitely want that. But you you have to understand today that social proof can sabotage or curtail those people from acting on that referral simply because of the fact that the social proof now is a, is a relevant part of our business model. People look at reviews and they make an, an, a gut decision based on social proof because you have what is going on, basically a mass of individuals that are statistically representing that experience. And when you get hundreds, thousands, tens of thousands of people saying something, there's obviously something going on, good or bad. Now, you also mentioned about net promoter scores. What exactly is net promoter scores? I think that was the next one that you mentioned to me that you wanted to discuss because you felt it was very important to go th with this conversation. But for people out there that don't know what net promoter score means, can you go over like briefly what it is and why it's so important in today's society when it comes to building a business and really you know, building your reputation? Certainly, and it's very easy. First of all, social proof is obviously outward facing. It's to the public. It's commonly known. It's easily seen. Net promoter score is an internal gauge that we're watching as a company as it relates to customer loyalty. What we're trying to do is get feedback from our customers as to how committed to our product are they? How committed to us as a business are they? That if we have it, will they buy it from us? So let me just kind of set the stage for this. In order to evaluate customer loyalty, there's a very specific question that's asked. 
fixed. It's intended to not be changed or altered so that it's used in every industry. Amazon uses it. Nike uses it. All businesses use this. And when used in evaluation of a company, this score matters as really a customer loyalty indicator. So the question is very simple. It's how likely is it that you would recommend this company to a friend or colleague, period. That's it. It's just a simple question. How likely is it that you would recommend this company to a friend or colleague? And when that question is asked, it's given a scale of, of zero to 10. And what we have to recognize is at the top end of that scale, the eight, nine, and 10, they're pretty loyal. These are people that are like Apple people that if it's a Mac, it's an Apple, they're buying it. They swear up and down. The entire family uses that platform. They're bought into the whole process. Anyone that is below the eight, typically maybe a range of four to seven, they're they're happy with the product. They're okay, but they're willing to shop elsewhere. If there's a good deal, a coupon, if there's some an additional feature that didn't exist before, they're more than happy to move and go to the other product and try the other service because there's no commitment on their part in their mind to you as a company or a product simply because they're buying what's best for them. And so that loyalty isn't there yet. Anyone that is beneath that four, say a zero to three, they're upset, they're frustrated, and they're actively not only looking for an alternative, but they're also pushing other people away from you. They're, they're more or less proponing or proponents for going somewhere else. And so what we have to recognize is when you look at this net promoter score is when the company is, is commonly as a group getting this aggregate number that's eight to 10. Well, we've got a good customer base. We've got a good quality product. They like what we do and they're committed to us. They're going to come back. But when our score drops below that eight, we're in this space where we're competing with our competitors. We've got to stand out. We're, we're in a troubled area. We're, they're not loyal to us. They're willing to shop and go around. They're going to be easily swayed by any advertising that's going on. They're not committed to us. And then if we get down to that lower number, and especially individuals that are again in that say zero to three range, we've got people out there that are actively promoting against us. They're out there noisily pointing people away from us. And we have to recommend that we address this. And so as a company, the net promoter score is a huge uh, indicator of how committed customers are to us based on the product or service that we're providing. So it's again, an internal question. It's typically not a publicly known answer, but it's given as feedback to us to run the company. Now, is there certain things that once they get to a certain score and it looks like they need a little help in that area, you know, every industry is different and every product is different, every service is different, but are there some common strategies that people can use to try to help improve their business when they start to see their scores drop? Is there, are there certain things that they could start doing to help themselves raise their score up, you know, because once they see that score drop, you know, a lot of people go into panic mode and, you know, but is there certain things they should stop, take a deep breath and then maybe do X, Y, and Z. And that will be the beginning of their, of their journey to help and improve their, their product or their service. Yeah. So let's kind of go through an experience here and see how this might be applicable. So imagine that you take a customer and after that purchase, say within the first day or week, you're asking them this net promoter score. Just give us quick feedback. How likely would you recommend this to someone else? And in that feedback, we're starting to see that the aggregate number is dropping. What we're realizing is that we're not engaging well with our customer base. If clearly we're experiencing something at the eight or nine or 10, we're doing something right. But let me just kind of step into this experience and kind of give you some examples. Imagine in the first 100 days is your chance to get this person to really become a proponent of you. They like the onboarding process. They like the packaging of the product. They like the fact that it was easily implemented or used. A variety of things that are to their advantage as a customer and met their needs when they bought the product or service. But we have ways as a company to impact that. We can do things as to, do we reach out to them as a customer to follow up? How did they like what they purchased a day, a week, a month? month ago. What we're trying to do is in the first hundred days, wow the customer. It's the experience of the customer. And this is where things that come into play that you sometimes wouldn't really consider, but are hugely important. It's the packaging of the product. Is this something that's well packaged? Is it delivered well in the sense that it arrives undamaged? Is it professionally looking or looking better than the competition? Am I instantly wowed with my decision of I did the right thing? Anything that you can do in those first 100 days to get 
that customer to experience something unexpected that's positive, then you're doing your a great job in helping elevate that score because the individual is going to go, this was an experience better than I expected. It was something that was obviously worth going through because I wanted X and I got X plus. This mm -hmm. is something that we in the first 100 days of business have the chance to really influence. And so as we're getting this net promoter score feedback a day after the sale, a week after the sale, a month after the sale, asking again, how likely is it that they would recommend us to a friend or colleague? That answer, when high, it means we're doing well. When low, we've got to update maybe the packaging, the customer, the customer onboarding, the delivery of the product, there's something to miss. And you know, it, it is funny because some something so simple like packaging can have such a huge impact. I've received products and, you know, the packaging wasn't very good and the product was damaged because of the packaging, but the product itself would have been fabulous, but because they were so lame when it came to the packaging and it caused damage to the product, I kind of lost a lot of what's the real word? You know, uh, I was disappointed. I, you know, I was kind of afraid to use them again because I didn't want to get another damaged product and have to be inconvenienced to go back and return the product and go through the whole process. So something as simple as packaging can make a huge difference. So it's a little thing sometimes that can make a huge difference, whether it's a, you know, whether it's a, above an, you know, an eight or below an eight. And, you know, you know, sometimes, you know, people have to really, you know, look at the whole picture because sometimes, you know, the little things are sometimes avoided but they could be, have such huge impacts overall. Yeah, it depends on the industry. It depends on the product, the service. But what I would encourage is what can you do that makes your experience with, with the customer different than your competition? What's that white glove experience that you can maybe offer that they wouldn't experience otherwise? I know of a company here locally that does HVAC and plumbing services, electrical services. When they go in, they put on white booties and all their technicians, when they go into the homes, wear these white booties. White booties because of the fact that they're going to be walking on their floor and carpets and so forth. And although it may may not be that their feet are clean or dirty. They obviously are putting forth this effort that is obvious that the people are, uh, that they care, that we're not going to have an issue. And then there's these situations where, you know, they wear a uniform where it looks nice and crisp and clean. It's not just, I'm coming to do work in your home. It's, it's the way I present myself when I arrive. There's no question. I represent the company. I'm here with that organization. So there's a variety of things that you know, this isn't electrical oriented, it's not plumbing oriented, but clearly it represents the business well. And then you can go into products. I just recently uh, got a watch, a watch that uh, uh, wasn't just something, you know, from, from a, a local store. And the watch that I received, the packaging that it was in was incredible. It was like opening a present. The watch was within a box, within a box, within a box. And then I got to the, the this watch and I'm like, my heaven's sakes, I bought the, you know, I got the watch, but I didn't realize getting a box within a box within a box to open and find the, the, the watch. I know that the packaging wasn't as expensive as the, the watch, but my heavens, the packaging wasn't inexpensive. It was an experience though. And it was kind of interesting. So that's what we're trying to do here is just kind of consider what it is that we can do for our customers to give them that wow experience. So um, yeah, a lot to be said about this, but that whole thing does lend to a higher net promoter score. You were also mentioning earlier that testimonials plays a big part also when it comes to the success of a business. Can you go a little bit more deeper into that and explain why testimonials are so vital? Yeah, so both with the uh, social proof, it's a numerical quantification, the net promoter score, it's that value range from one, zero to 10. What we're looking for, though, is feedback. We need to have this open-ended dialogue where the customer has the ability to somehow express themselves and communicate. And we both know that there are people who are happy to say verbally over the phone, in an email, perhaps, something that's going on. But what we want to do is capture it in a way of saying, is this something that can be public? Is this something I can share? And I'll just use Google reviews as a great example. It's tied to their profile. So it's them as an individual going in and putting in this review. It's not an email. It's not a voice recording or a voicemail. It's something that now is tied to their persona and there's an identity behind it. So my point is, is simply this, there's no better proponent of your customer product or service, what it is you're offering, then the customer's feedback saying, here's why I bought it. Here's what the experience was. Here's what I liked. 
all the things that you can do in marketing, the buzzwords, the vocabulary, the adjectives, all these things that you're using that might help you from an SEO perspective, that may help you from an eye-catching kind of thing is wonderful. But what speaks best is that peer-to-peer, -peer, here's what another customer like me said when using your product or service. Someone in a similar situation as me said this about what it is they bought from you. That matters so much. And so what you're going to see is the more that you can actually capture that feedback as it relates to reviews, especially in written form, the more you're going to be able to pay attention to why did they buy it? What was their experience about and what stood out to them? Sometimes as a company, we believe people are buying our product or service because of a certain thing that we think is important. At the end of the day, it could be entirely different. They bought it because of X. It was packaged best. The experience was most favorable. Those things might be the critical component that differentiates you from your competition. It's not you're thinking the food that you make and that's why they're coming to your restaurant. It's actually your food isn't as good as the one down the street. It happens to be that your customer service service, your maitre d', your waiters are trained well, the service, the linen that you're using, the silverware you're using, the fact that they serve it properly, all those things are creating an experience that wows the customer that adds to the whole presentation of the food. That's something that you need to understand because as a chef, you're just thinking, I'm, I'm making a meal and I hope the people like it. There can be so much more to it. And getting it in written feedback, it's like, oh my heavens, people value this more. You can now start tweaking your advertising, your marketing to reflect what you're hearing the customers are really saying matters with their purchase. If you've got a whole bunch of customers that are saying something specific, then clearly you need to lead with that in your marketing so that you're repurposing what your customers are telling you matters for others to know. And that's one of the things that I think is very important to realize is that all of this can circle back around to the marketing and sales that you're doing. Yeah, you've got happy customers, but let's go find out, find other individuals like them who also can be happy. I like that a lot. You know, I think that's very important. Now, are there certain ways that people, uh, businesses should try to entice their, um, their, their, their customers to actually, you know, um, put a review or a testimonial because that, you know, a lot of times I would see, you know, you, you, you get a free this or maybe 10% off this, you know, if you leave a review or, or a testimonial, you know, and, um, it, it works because people then, you know, or even a QR, you know, are there things that you see that are, are actually very effective for, um, customers to leave a review or a testimonial to, um, about a business or a service that they've just uh, received? I'm so happy you asked this because yes, there needs to be a process to purposely get these, request these. So let me give you a few ideas real quickly that I think some of your listeners can quickly implement. The first is you've got to have a workflow, a process, a cadence that somewhere in the post sale, this just naturally happens that you're, you're just at day one, day two, day seven, you're just as part of an email campaign or a phone call, uh, maybe the customer interaction, it's being asked when you've got someone that is actually going out and doing a service at the end of providing that service before leaving, they are soliciting and asking for it at the cash register. The customer is being asked here on the receipt. Here's a QR code, fill this out. But the thing to take it to another level is to have your employees rewarded, not the customer. The customer is hopefully happy with the product or service they purchased. And yes, you can offer them, uh, say, you know, give us a review and we'll give you a coupon code to get a, a dessert with your, your next meal or something. But what's more impactful, in my opinion, is when the employee says, hey, could you give us a review? And by the way, if you mention my name, you know, that would be really appreciated. When you start to have employees saying, hey, do this. And by the way, mention my main, my name. So my boss can see that, you know, that you had a good experience. That's powerful, especially when the customer is saying, Hey, that was really great. I appreciate this. Thanks for coming over. Hey, could you do me a favor and uh, do a online review for me? I'd really appreciate it. And if you can mention my name, I'd really appreciate it because it'd be nice for my boss to know that it was with me that I, uh, that you had had this experience. That's huge because now what the company does is celebrates those as the company gets this review. It's not just this arbitrary review that the company's good or that the product's good. It's to say, 
that Sally was amazingly helpful and very thoughtful in what she did. It was that Carl was very, very impactful and really appreciated his attentiveness. When that said, you can go to Carl and you can go to Sally and you can say, hey, job well done. Thank you for representing the company so well. You're a wonderful ambassador for the business. That puts that employee on a pedestal and helps them recognize that what they do matters, that it's making a difference, that it's noticed. And at the same time, you can now use that in the marketing. You can say, you know, put this out there as a customer or as a uh, review for customers to see. And then they're more inclined to say, hey, by the way, I heard that Sally's really good. Can I have Sally? I, I'd like to work with her. This just has this snowballing effect. And, and I've seen it in my own company is the reason why I'm bringing this up. I've got my employees to the point that whenever they hear something favorable, they have the link that they know they're supposed to use to send the customer. Thanks for saying that over the phone to me. I'm going to send you an email. I would love it if you could share that online or share the review there. And that way my boss will see it. I'd like for him to hear what you just had to say. And not all the time will they do it, but most of the time they will. And that's what you're wanting. Yes. I think that's great. You know, that's so true. And a lot of times, you know, you, you know, for me, I always thought it was the trying to entice the customer, but when you do that, that is even more impactful because that will motivate the employees to want to get more reviews and they'll be, you know, you know, politely more aggressive to want to, you know, interact with the customer and, you know, and most likely you'll get twice as many or three times as many reviews by doing it that way than doing it the other way. Yeah, it's wonderful. It's great. The employees like it. It's always nice to hear about your fellow employee getting some accolade. It's a polite way of patting them on the back. And obviously they blush because someone noticed them. I mean, it's a lot of fun, especially when you're having company meetings or a company newsletter that you can share those in. It's good. Oh, definitely. Now, before we start to close and we go over some, you know, um, main points about our discussion today, is there anything else that you'd like to add to the conversation that you feel that some pointers that you want to bring out that we may not have talked about? Uh, not specifically, but I'd like to do a review and do an offer, if I may. Uh, real yeah. quickly, I can't say enough about social proof. I just think we have to recognize that it's a natural part of our society today, that you've obviously got to be sensitive to what the customers are saying in the reviews that they're providing online, and that your customers, even when referred, are using those to make the ultimate decision of whether or not to buy your product or use your service. The other thing I want to point out is with the Net Promoter Score, it's excellent feedback as to how loyal people are to your company. If you can find a way to embed that into the post customer experience somewhere within the first day, week, month, it does give you the feedback you're looking for as to whether or not you are wowing your customer over, uh, over achieving, if you will, it's that old adage of you want to under promise and over deliver. Well, how is this going for your company? And so that's what you're looking for with the net promoter score. And then the value of the testimonials, getting actually the feedback, not just that quantifiable representation, but literally that verbal uh, communication of what it is they liked. And if you can involve your employees in soliciting that they'll get mentioned. And that's something that you can then celebrate as well. So those things being said, I'd like to actually offer what is called a business score. A business score is an assessment that you can do of your company based on eight things, eight drivers that literally determine the value of your business. One of which is your net promoter score. And with reference to social proof and so forth, you can see how your company is doing. So what I would encourage all the listeners to do is take a moment to go to universalaccounting.com and they're in the free resource section. In step six, you'll see that you can get your business score. Step six is a free assessment of your company. It's an online questionnaire that you can do. And with that, you'll receive a digital report outlining each of the eight drivers as they relate to your company and what you can be doing to work on them to actually improve each of them as it relates to your business. So take a moment, go to universalaccounting.com Com, go to the free resource section, step six, get your business score, fill out that questionnaire and you won't regret it. I love it. I love it. Well, you know, Roger, this has been wonderful. As always, you just wow me every time we talk because you have such great uh, information to provide to our listeners. And I even learn from you because you just, your information is, is so well detailed and it's right on the ball, you know, and a lot of times you bring up things that, you know, I think the everyday businessman or woman doesn't really think of sometimes because especially if you're very busy and you're used to doing things a certain way, you know, sometimes these things can easily be overlooked, but when someone brings up a different idea or a different way of doing things, it really can make the light bulb go off. And then, and you realize, wait, I'm not doing that. Maybe if I implement that into our business, 
we might actually, you know, improve in certain areas. And it really is a, a great way to help people grow. So I thank you so much. And I encourage people to go to your Universal Accountant Center to learn more and to understand different ways that they could grow and prosper as a company and as a small or medium business and, and continue to prosper to different levels and elevate to different levels. Well, so once again, I just like to thank you, Roger. It's always a pleasure to hear your voice and your knowledge. And I thank you so much to come on the show today. It's my pleasure. It's been always fun having these conversations. It's nice to kind of step back and just talk about business in general. So I'm happy yeah. to share these little tidbits of knowledge. And of course, if it's about business, it is universal. Yes, it is. Thank you so much, Roger. This has been a pleasure and I look forward to our next conversation. Have a great day. <laughs>